happy to be here. Uh, I really appreciate being invited to this. I never get tired of talking about LEDs in particular, but uh, Raleigh has a variety of sustainability initiatives going, and it's all very exciting. We found a lot of energy on our staff for this, in addition to uh, from our citizens. And, and what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit about what we have done so far. But the real message I want to leave you with is how you move your own communities forward in this regard and how you might help to convince them to adopt some of these new emerging technologies that might be a little more cutting edge. Governments are not known for being on the cutting edge of new technologies. And I think we have been lucky to position ourselves in this case as an early adopter of LED technology and as an example to many other both public and private sector organizations to do this. So let me just move ahead here and see if that works. It does not. Let's try this. Okay. Um, this may look like bragging to you, but it is actually <laughs> part of the message. Uh, um, Raleigh, like most communities, is actually in a competitive framework. We don't think of our governments as being in a competitive framework as private sector companies are, but in fact we are. We are competing for dollars from higher levels of government. We are competing for uh, economic development dollars in terms of companies and people moving to our communities. And we are competing for image because what we're trying to do is attract bright people to both uh, elected positions in our uh, community and also to move to our community, continue to build the economic development engine that is uh, important to our region. And so being on these lists is very important to the city because it positions us as a place that is A, innovative, uh, B, young. We attract a lot of young people who are early in their careers and who are entrepreneurial and building new companies. And uh, C, high technology. High technology is what the Triangle is all about and Raleigh always positions itself in trying to um, uh, distribute its image to the world as being a high-tech area that's good for young people and that's a great place to start a business and move on ahead. And of course that's true of our entire region for you Durham and Chapel Hill and Cary folk. But um, let me talk about LEDs in particular because this is one way in which we are trying to position ourselves as being out in front. Is Raleigh was the first LED city, as Deb mentioned, that uh, we actually sat down together with Cree as we were talking about other ways in which we could partner. And it became clear that the city was an excellent laboratory for this emerging technology, just as Cree's business model was changing from selling a bazillion LEDs to a few manufacturers of cell phone backlit displays and, and car dashboards to general illumination lighting. As the technology made a big leap to high brightness LEDs, all of a sudden general illumination lighting using LEDs became a viable thing in the marketplace. And Cree's business model was changing and we said, well, you know, we use lighting for everything. We light pools, we light office buildings, we light parking decks, we light streets, we light just about everything that you can think of. The city of Raleigh, or most cities, have control over that wide range of different types of lighting. So we are a great beta test site for any kind of new technology that would be energy savings and maintenance savings in, uh, in uh, lighting. And so uh, we were very happy in starting to talk about that, to be able to develop this relationship and to sort of gin up the whole idea of an LED city, a place where people would look to to show how this emerging technology could be used in their community. Our first project, as Deb again mentioned, was this pilot project in our municipal deck where we took 144 fixtures that were high pressure sodium, you know, the horrible, awful, you know, uh, prison yard orange light that we see everywhere uh, in our communities. And we transitioned that over to one level to an LED. And it's great if you're ever in Raleigh and you drive by the municipal deck, which is downtown at the corner of Hargett and Dawson Streets. Um, you'll see the orange level and the, and the white level, and it's really a dramatic contrast. But nevertheless, we found great acceptance from the users, something we were not expecting. Tremendous acceptance from the users in this. They all thought it was both brighter and safer, despite the fact that the LED level, because we replaced the fixtures one for one, actually casts 11% fewer lumens than the high pressure sodium levels do. So the relationship between quantity of light and safety is really uh, in question as a result of some of these uh, results. Uh, we also did the convention center deck, which Deb also mentioned. Uh, um, our estimates here are even if you assume no increase in the cost of energy or the cost of maintenance for the next 15 years, which obviously is totally unrealistic, 
we will save a minimum of about $300,000 over that period of time by making this decision to go LED. And we had already bought the fixtures, the, hyper, the metal halide fixtures that were going in the deck when we made the decision to go LED. So that includes selling those off at 50 cents on the dollar. We're still making $300,000 in savings. So the, the economic benefits are really there, particularly for low bay lighting. We've done a few other things, too. Street lighting as has been mentioned. The U.S. Department of Energy recently published a consulting study that said there were two areas in which LED lighting has the potential to substantially reduce energy demand in this country. One is street lights and the other is interior lighting for buildings. So those are the two areas in which we are beginning to concentrate our efforts because we feel like they're the biggest bang for the buck. Now, the street lighting has a lot of challenges. Most of our communities do not own our own street light system. Some of you electro cities may do that, but most of the big cities do not. Well, our, our electricity provider, Progress Energy in our case, rents us by the month, is the same as Winston-Salem, rents us by the month, and uh, so we have to come up with a new tariff or a new way of paying for these things in order to gain the efficiency of this. So we've got to push our energy companies in a little bit kicking and screaming into this, but we are doing that right now and we are actually getting some uh, some progress from them. As a matter of fact, Progress Energy installed its own street light pilot project along their corporate headquarters block in downtown Raleigh with these new leadway fixtures which you see here on the diagram. Those are actually very high efficiency and relatively low cost fixtures that are beginning to change the picture for the economics of street lights. But it, this is an important area I think. Uh, traffic signal conversion has been mentioned before. We're, uh, we're about at 95% of our city-owned traffic signals in the municipal, uh, municipal limits have been converted to LED. And we figure that those are saving us 80% in energy, except again, we are not capturing that until we can convince Progress Energy to change the tariff, because again, they charge us by the intersection. We're saving on maintenance right away. We no longer have to have people on call 24-7 except for complete power loss to the entire fixture because we no longer have signals going out one at a time like the old incandescent signals do. So it has a tremendous maintenance savings for us right now. The energy savings, however, we still have not yet captured because our energy provider is a little bit sluggish in wanting to give up that revenue source. So we're pushing on that one pretty hard. Uh, we have other LED applications that we've tried. We've lit an, an urban plaza in downtown Raleigh. We have uh, transitioned an entire city park. All the exterior lighting was transitioned over to LED. And in fact, this one's very interesting because we have included in that project a series of uh, um, motion detectors which have um, allowed us to dim the lights after midnight to 50% of their luminescence, which is one of the great advantages of LED, their unlimited dimming capacity. With As a matter of fact, they make the lights more efficient when you dim them, which is un exactly the opposite of most other types of lighting. But nevertheless, it allows us to dim them to 50%, and then if anybody comes into the park, the lights go back up, which in, uh, actually has a safety factor in it too, and that, that's much like the lights on the back of your house that the motion detector turns on. It has, a, it has a safety benefit in addition to having an energy savings benefit. And we've also lit a greenway underpass um, with LED lights. 